Hey, what's happening, everybody? Dr. Ryan Weaver here. Today, we're going to be talking about what stinks and what in the world is in your deodorant. So, this spinal workshop is a first ever brand new discussion of what chemicals are found in our deodorant. So, I'm going to dive into this. Um, again, this is all brand new. Uh, I've never went over any of these things before, and it became quite interesting as I did my research on this. Um, because you feel like you always know a little bit and then you just go down the rabbit hole and you find out a lot more. But before we get started, um, maybe it's something that you've really questioned when you go through something like a grocery store or, you know, a big box store, Walmart, Aldi's, uh, Kroger's, these kinds of things. And when you go down through looking for personal care products or cosmetics and just like even in the food world of, you know, what's natural, organic and all the trick words that we can use, um, really going to try to shed some light on that within uh, specifically deodorant. Um, a lot of these things that I'll, I'll give you one um, resource for diving into kind of, again, personal care, uh, self-care products, such as even shampoos and, and things like that. So again, we do these spinal workshops uh, or wellness workshops. I'm also calling them because there's a ton of information out there and we really want to you know, narrow it down to typically an eight to 10 minute video um, so that you can feel empowered when you go through these stores for, again, self-care products, or even if you suffer from certain symptoms and things like that, how chiropractic care can help. So um, before we get into this, again, like, subscribe our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel. That way you can stay up to date on all the research that we put out uh, and that we've found ourselves as well. So let's start with the law that does not require the FDA to regulate ingredients in deodorants and other cosmetic products. The EWG, which is known as the Environmental Working Group, uh, reports that there are more rules governing chemicals that we put on our crops than chemicals that we put on our bodies. And back in 1938, 1938, excuse me, the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act only gave the government an ability to regulate cosmetics considered quote unquote poisonous. Since then, so 60, uh, where are we at here? 62, 86 years later, um, only nine products have ingredients, excuse me, nine ingredients have ever been banned. Now, in order to change this rule, it would basically go down to Congress having to change the whole law. Um, and actually in 2018, uh, JAMA, or the Journal of American Medical Association, called for this change where a group of medical professionals um, asked for greater regula uh, regulations of personal care products. So obviously um, an act of changing some of the laws to make regulations a lot more strict. Um, again, you hear this when I talk about, uh, I believe the Spinal Workshop was food dyes and how... Um, I can see it right now because we have it going on in our office. The Fruit Loops uh, ingredient list in Europe versus in America, totally different. A lot less ingredients and chemicals in the European one, uh, which I'm actually going to reference Europe here in, in a moment. So things to know. Number one, always research your ingredients. Again, that goes for anything whenever we talk about personal care products to food to drink to energy drinks to Gatorade, all these things always, you know, do your research on this. But some of the ones that, that really stick out, especially when you're talking about deodorant, is no aluminum. So aluminum is commonly found in antiperspirants. Um, the bad thing about that is it can plug your sweat ducts, again, causing uh, the sweat ducts to basically prevent us from sweating. So they basically clog them. Now, with Aluminum. In 2021, a study um, of the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease strongly suggests an association between aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, another one that you hear, parabens, um, used as an artif artificial preservative. And the reference that I, I referenced, uh, or excuse me, how you can reference is EWG skin deep database uh, ewg skin deep database really cool uh, browser that you can type in um, either some ingredients or you can type in what i was doing was typing in um, like deodorants and the brand names that i knew and it's basically going to generate a chart for you um, 
color coordinated and it numbers things, basically gives the product a grade. And then within the ingredients, it grades each one of those. Um, so I found that to be very eye-opening, um, very useful as well. Um, other ingredients that are sensitive to the skin, uh, you may see baking soda. Um, again, not as bad, but you got to watch out because it's very al alkaline and can cause irritation under the skin, uh, or excuse me, under the underarm, which the skin is very thin there. Um, that could also be listed as sodium bicarbonate. Um, but an alternative to that is deep sea minerals and antioxidant salts. Um, they naturally um, control odor and decrease the bacteria that can cause odor, but they also don't interrupt sweating. Okay. Um, another natural ingredient, tapioca starch. Um, this basically helps absorb uh, superficial wetness on top of the skin without causing that irritation. Um, Another bonus you'll see, and typically if you start going towards more natural deodorants, is coconut oil. Super big fan of that. It's antibacterial, um, but it also can help moisturize the skin. Now we get into this controversial portion of the ingredients. So fragrance, what is defined as this? There's over 3,000 plus ingredients that can be used to make up in fragrance, uh, perfumes, natural fragrance. So basically, what I would suggest that you look for is essential oils. So, you know, again, a trick of natural fragrance, you want to look more for essential oils. Um, a few other studies on here, 2018 uh, review found that current uh, human exposure to uh, phthalates may have adverse effects on the male reproductive system. That European study I was referencing, uh, parabens were banned for cosmetic use in Europe. The European Union banned this in 2012. Um, also, another fun fact, I referenced coconut oil as an antibacterial. Um, hops extract is another one. Essential oils, specifically tea tree oil, lemongrass, and rosemary. Um, those are ingredients you can look for. Um, but again, I thought this was a really good product on here, um, or resource, I should say. EWG Skin Deep Data Base. Okay, um, those are also um, databases such as that, uh, actually an app on, on the phone. Um, the one I downloaded the other day um, for myself was called Yuka, Y-U-K-A. And then um, there's another one, I forget the name of it exactly. It's, I think it's Dirty Food, something like that. But really cool product. You can scan um, ingredients. Uh, like let's say you're going through the grocery, but they also bring up similar to what we did here with the deodorant is good, bad ingredients, alternatives as well. So check those out, use those, download them on your app, on your phone. So you have those uh, at any given moment when you're going through stores. So I hope that you found this information uh, beneficial. Also at least make you think of what are we putting on our bodies? Um, you know, we always talk about the toxins and what we put in our bodies, but also what do we put on our bodies. So that was just deodorant. Again, we could dive into shampoos, um, colognes, all kinds of things. So I hope, again, uh, you found this useful, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time on our Spinal Workshop. And again, like, subscribe, so you can check us out for all of our up-to-date information. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that Spinal Workshop. Don't forget to like the video if you learned something and be sure to share it with somebody else who may benefit from that information discussed. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you are alerted whenever we post a video.